All right. Wow, wow, wow. So here, here's another little vid on Ukraine. Blacks complain. The situation complain <laughs> in Ukraine. <laughs> yeah. Now people say, oh, you're making light of... No, I'm not making light of it. It's a real world. It's a chaotic reality. That's, that's the reality. It's a chaotic reality. Mm -hmm. And we're dealing with also a lot of ghosts of the past. You know, a lot of folks think that, OK, because history and, you know, what happened back, you know, the Cold War and World War Two, World War One. But don't recognize that these are ghosts that that just haven't really died or been put to rest. You know what I mean? Now, black folks, right, in Ukraine. I mean, I knew there's some black people in Ukraine, you know, of course. I, mean, I see black folks, you know, some black people, maybe visiting or something like that, you know. You know, after knowing the history of the wars and, and world war and stuff like that, I would have thought that, you know, you know, there'll be visitors, you know, maybe a few people here and there. But then I'm watching these videos, people are like sharing them on like social media. And it seems to be, be, you know, getting more attention. People saying that the media is not covering this. And now I'm beginning to see like the media is covering some more of this and everything. At first I saw one, one, um, one post that has said on the YouTubes about Jamaicans and in, in, in racism, some racism in Jamaicans in Ukraine. I was like, what? Jamaicans in Ukraine? And it was like a large number. And then there was another article that says blacks, like blacks in Ukraine. Then I saw a next thing which said Africans. <laughs> so I just put it all together, okay? Blacks, Africans, Jamaicans, blacks, Jamaicans, Africans in Ukraine all complain of racism, racism in Ukraine. And this is this is kind of the the basic uh, subject line right here. First of all, I've been doing some research. Still, this is like a research vlog, a research video, because it's just sharing some of the results, some things I didn't even really know. And now I'm getting to know. I'm like, oh, okay. Because first thing I ask is, why so many, you know, black people doing in Ukraine? How how they get to Ukraine? I mean, were they enslaved and slaved or something like that? Are they part of like 400 years ago? They like the remainder? Obviously not. So they must have, you know, gone over there. Were they forced into Ukraine? Were they captive? Like, did somebody grab them? Like, what happened to, like, black people, beta Israel over here in America? Is that what happened to them? So how did they get to the Ukraine? First of all, it was the shock. The shock of just seeing, you know, so many black folks. There was one, it's kind of a little airy, in a sense, when you know history. You know, you see a group of black people there, they're by some, like, train tracks. And I could, if I was a swearing man, I would swear, say, I've seen those train tracks before. You know, you remember what happened to the European, you know, the Russian, not the Russian, but well, they have the Russian Jews too, but it happened to German Jews and Eastern European Jews when they were, you know, they were evacuated. Remember how they evacuated them, but they lied to the, 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 the European, you know, those white Jews up in Europe during the time of the Nazis, they lied to them and they said that, oh, they are relocating them for their safety, like to a better place, right? And they even put out false propaganda where you saw some like um, news feeds where this was like the relocated, um, you know, Jews, you know, from different parts of like Germany or like Eastern Europe that had relocated. So I guess some of the other white European Jews got to see those particular stories or they were hearing about it and they believed the Nazis, even though the Nazis was talking about their, their you don't call it racism, their anti-Semitism, was already speaking that stuff. Hitler was already campaigning on that stuff. So they were kind of well aware. In fact, a lot of European Jews, when I read some of their conversations about like World War II and the Holocaust, you know, some even say, well, other Jews were trying to warn other Jews, like, watch out, you know, like, watch out. You, you got to get out of, you know, this Hitler, this Hitler is, is bad news. They have bad feeling about Hitler. Get out while you can, you know, go to England, you know, go to maybe America, go to the, you know, go somewhere else. They, they couldn't go to the state of Israel at that time, you know what I'm saying? But, but, but get out of, you know, Nazi Germany, all right? And some 
in a sense, laughed it off. You know, it, it, it didn't seem, I guess no one could expect what would happen now, seeing all these different black peoples, you know, blacks, you know, the blacks, they just say black, so we really don't know blacks, blacks, black, 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 black. I mean, what do you mean by black? Are they black Americans over in, 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 in Ukraine? And, and they're not letting the black Americans out? I mean, can't they just go to the embassy? Right? And we know that America tends to, you know, on the political level, right, look out for its citizens. So, therefore, like a black American or a black person who has United States citizenship in another country probably will get a little more protection on a certain level than that one would get per se in the USA. It's strange. It's strange because I have ones and ones who have actually traveled and actually have gone different places and they basically more or less, you know, say the same. You know what I mean? That they are, you know, it's like it's like weird, I guess, because when you're in another country, the US, the United States is looking at it like, well, um, and this is USA, USA. But when you're in the USA <laughs> and you're a black person, it could be different. You know, you can see that racism and, you know, white racism, white supremacy a little bit different in country than you do when you're carrying, you know, like United States documentation, identification, and you're in another country. You say you're American. People, you know, the people in the country look at you differently. And it's like you have some protection. So when they say blacks, Jamaicans and and Africans, if they were saying just Africans and Jamaicans, yes, we could say they're black people, both of them, Jamaicans and Africans, you know, or we say black Africans, you know, because they got that whole African thing twisted is all kind of, you know what I mean? But anyway, blacks, Jamaicans and Africans are complaining of racism, racism at the border, uh, a border you know, border racism. Got a couple more picks Ones and ones, I asked a few ones uh, if they come across any pics, you know, to send me any more pics they have, you know, share any pics. So right now I'm grabbing a couple more pics. Hopefully I have some of this to share with you. If it's not in this vlog here in the follow up, I'm sending that over right now, now, now. I hope it comes over over here. Let's see if it's at the right link. OK, so there's a there's an article. I like to show a little bit of it. But firstly and foremostly. Wow. <laughs> wow. I we be everywhere, man. <laughs> we uh oh uh oh where is this? Is this the Ukraine? Is this this is definitely Europe? Right? Or is it England? Is this Ukraine? Could they do this in the Ukraine? You know, we, we even have some members of the royal the the, 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 the Brit the British um, you know, the royal family over there, you know? So called, right? You know, that had the, you know, the, the, the Nazi thing. You remember before the other boy got, did he get married? He got married too, yeah. Yeah, both of them got married, right? The, the uh, Queen uh, Elizabeth, her, her son, you, you remember that thing, you know. So, and, and they were very close with the Nazis. You know, there's a lot of Nazi, Nazi romance, a lot of Nazi romance. You know, this, this is old news. This, this is no new, new news. You, you should know this. I know, like this picture here, this is not a, a, a grainy black and white picture from back in the 1940s. This is a this is a color detail color picture. Look at them, right? They, they're proud of it. I saw um, forget the brother's name, but some of you might have seen this. This is on um, Voice of the Ancestors on the IG. You know, Voice of the Ancestors. Also check us out, Ross Iadonis on the IG, as well as Rastafari Groundation on the IG. Rastafari Groundation, you know, to get some of our posts and updates if you're on the IG. But we saw um, a little video snippet where, oh, Chan, this brother, his name, I'm trying to remember his name right now. Um, but what he said, what he said is, is worthy to be shared, that white people are supposed to be racist. Some of you probably know, you've probably seen this on Voice of the Ancestors on the IG he said that white people are supposed to be racist. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> what do you think about that? You think that white people are supposed to be racist? Which is a, a kind of a little sub point. That's not our main point right here. What we're talking about is that this whole bias, anti Semitism, because in Adolf Hitler, his whole anti Semitism has a lot to do with racism because he was including white European, Eastern European Jews, like the Jews, you know, the white Jews especially, in the same category with black people. 
In fact, in some of the Third Reich, um, their slides. I got to find a few slides, and you don't really see these slides out. This is like the actual slides that Nazi Germany was um, circulating, you know, amongst themselves. Basically, what they were thinking and how they came up with all these kind of racial philosophies, right, and anti-Semitism. Like they, they have this thing called Ubermenschen, Ubermenschen, Udermenschen, Utermenschen, Udermenschen, and 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 Uber, Uber, you know Uber, right? Uber means super. Uber in, in German means super. So we everybody talking about Uber. I like Uber. Uber is a German word. Did you know? Did you know that Uber is a German word? Now here's the question. Is Uber <laughs> is Uber owned by Nazis? Right? By Germans. But why I say this is because of Operation Paperclip. You, you heard about Operation Paperclip? No. Check out Adam Curtis films. I like to kind of promote some of his films because his films are one of the few kind of um, histor history, current event, world order, kind of like what's going on in the world today that really makes sense, right? As he does video and, and documentary series. The latest one, I think, is what can't get you out of my head, right? That's the latest one. But I would recommend ones look up Century of the Self, and powers of nightmare begin off with century of the self and power of nightmares those two he also had the one um hyper normalization right that one came out during the trump time that one also i think if you can watch that one maybe first all right but he kind of builds on these themes right these themes and we can say in a sense theories that involve both the his history, you know, the history of different world situations, the politics and so those dynamics, but also the psychology, the psychology involved. Everybody forgets the soul. They forget the soul. They forget the psychological, huh? The trap. Well, the trap. Do we see the trap? The trap. I, I showed it before. I might show it again before we get on the outro right here. Some of Adam Curtis films right there but if anyone i would say watch first if you can they, they, it should be up on the youtubes and stuff like that anyone i would watch I, I would recommend to watch first it probably will be century of the self and here's my recommendation to fellow habarim and and fellow disciples i say watch it i think like three parts watch one part you know you could do it all in one sitting depends on your time and and mine right watch it right and then take a moment Sit down and write some notes. What notes, what ideas come to mind? And then when you get a chance, go watch it again. But watch it like one video at a time, taking and paying attention to some of the key words, or some key words. You know, a lot of times we watch a video, we see the pictures, we see, you know, the, the visuals, right? And we might pick up on certain words, but it's like sometimes when we're watching something like a documentary, documentaries are good. Sometimes what I like to do is I'll watch a documentary and then I'll try to either more listen to it, more listen to it. You know what I mean? Because sometimes when you listen to it, you pick up on things that while you're watching it, right, subconsciously, unconsciously, you're not really conscious. You're really not woke, wake, right? You're not woke, wake. You're not woke, wake, you know, in that sense. Because, you know, the visuals, we're looking at the pictures, pretty pictures or unpretty pictures, and that kind of distracts us. Right. And you miss the words. But anyway, if you can check it out. So here, blacks, right, Africans and Jamaicans, the whole Ukraine thing, blacks, Africans or blacks, Jamaicans and Africans. Right. Again, complain or complain again. I, I got to say complain again. I use the example of America. Like when they say blacks, they said I saw one thing. They said blacks trap. I said blacks trap. Because you're the one that term blacks. Right, usually properly being used, it usually refers to firstly like black Americans because that was a that was a terminology that was more or less coined because of our struggle, right? Black people's struggle over here. I historically, you could look at, you know, that's what we say black Americans, so on and so on. Later on, the African terminology, right, was more um, utilized during the political, social struggles, you know, going back at least since 1865. You know why 1865 is important, don't you? Right? 
No, well, look it up. 1865 and black people. You know, why, why was 1865 important to black people? In case you don't know. Because it's other people that only speak about their struggles. You know, like a lot of people don't really speak about our struggles. And even many of us as so-called black Americans, right? And we as, you, I would say, black American Rastafari, right? Don't really speak about our struggle. We get caught up in other people's thing. You know what I mean? What goes on down the yard or, you know, Jamaicans or even various different Africans. And we do a lot of goofy stuff. And we have lost, right, our ability to even help our brothers and sisters and other black people because we are not even about first things first for our people. We're always like, kind of jumping out the window for other people and kind of like, in a sense, um, you know, too busy giving to other people instead of making it so that we have to give it. Our ancestors made it, right, in a sense. When I say made it, they put in that work of the struggle. A lot of people know that in 18, not 18, going back to 1800, bring forward, 19, 19, 1965, let's go 100 years, 1965, there was a civil rights bill that opened up the door Right for not just black and well for immigration, right for immigration that was attached to the civil rights. So black people were seeking to get our um, rights as citizens, as so-called citizens, to be honored and respected. Well, I'm saying, no, when I say respect them, I'm saying respect it on the governmental level. That means if you give monies to these communities over here and they're American citizen, they happen to be white, then you're going to give the same and likewise and commensurate monies over here. But you know what they really do? What happened since the 60s, since 1865? The Civil Rights Bill, you'll think it was for black people and they'll tell us it was for black Americans. But actually, that Civil Rights Bill, it benefited a lot of other people, even some other black people, Africans and so forth and so on, but it benefited other people more so than us. In fact, the floodgates of immigration was opened up based on the 1965 immigration um, bill or act that was passed. <laughs> in other words, it was like, we, we're going to put things in legislation that will be good for you black American Negro people lost sheep of the house of Israel, Judahites, but they didn't tell us we were Judahites, but you know, you black people over here in America. But then the tricky thing is that they started to, what, what did the Bible says? Um, mischief, right? You know, mischief, the mischief, you know, right? You know, devised evil by mischief of the law. They flipped it around so that they opened up the door for ones like other Africans, right? Or, or Africans to come in other people from Middle East, everybody, anybody, that's why you see everybody starts to be talking in racial language. I'm not saying for the Jamaicans and the Africans over there because they are black and yes, that part of Europe or the Europeans, I mean, they have over 400 years, right? At least 400 years of involvement in racist activity. I mean, I mean, the Belgian, you know, a Belgium is over there in Europe. I know Ukraine is not Belgium, but they all basically were hand in hand. I'm not saying Ukraine per se, but they are part of uh, the past hundred years history of race, of racial anti-Semitism. See, anti-Semitism and racism are connected only if you put black people at the head of it. I have to say it like that. Why? Why? Because... The first time anti-Semitism pop up, that word was a coined word back in the 1800s something, sometime. And then it got to be used because of the, what occurred with the European Jews in Europe. But according to the Nazis, they basically, and this is what a lot of white Jews don't want to tell you, the Nazis viewed the Jews to be half like a byproduct of like, 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 um, like Turkish or, or, or Arabian people. My, what they call Oriental, uh, Oriental, right? Eastern people and black people, um, nigre, nigger, ne nigger, and also they call it what they call it again, nigger and um, uh, hamitain, hamitain, hamitain to like say Hamites. Listen, y'all, pause for a moment right here. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. You see this for yourself? Because some people might want to say, oh, he's, he's, saying, but I'm showing you the proof, right? This is a research video here. We're researching this right here, still researching this whole Ukraine thing and the most recent 
complaint concerning black people, African and Jamaican. So what I'm firstly seeking to do is to break down that terminology in the news feeds that we saw. We saw, oh, they're racist against black people, all right? And of course, you know, when they say that, when they use this term black people, no matter wherever it's going on in the world, the first thing that we as so-called black Americans think is like, ah, you know, they want the giant to rise up, right? They want Judah, Yehuda, Judah, thou art he, right? That are he whom thy brethren shall praise, sort of, right? But praise in the Hebrew doesn't really mean exactly what, what people might think it means like in the English. Praise come from the, the word um, yada, yada. That's where you get toda, toada, toda, yada. Yada is the hand, like to stretch the hand forward. So it's almost like Jamaicans would say arms out, right? So praise like arms out. Like for example, people put their hand out because they want to get something from you. You give it to them and they thank you because you gave it to them. That's the sense of praise in the Hebrew. Right. But it seems like a lot of people really don't really fulfill our, our people don't really see the significance of black Americans. Right. We, we, we kind of use like there's a beast of burden even among other black people. Like right now, there's a problem. Right. Jamaicans and Africans are trying to get out of Ukraine because of Russia and Ukraine and there's a war invasion, this and that going on. And they're trying to get out. Hey, I, I really hope that I, I, you know I wish them well. No, for real. You know, no, no there's, there's nothing untowards about what I'm saying on that level. But who's really to blame? Is it really Ukraine that's to blame? Is it these um, Eastern Europeans which have a history, right, of 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 the most craziest inhuman? I mean, what happened in World War II? We can't even compare that with even the Holocaust with what happened to black people. But what it shows is something that Whoopi was talking about, like man's inhumanity to man, right? And on another level, white on white. I mean, why is it all right to say black on black, crime and violence, but it's not right to identify when it's white on white and it still ain't right? That's what's happened now. Black folks, right? Some black folks. I don't think it's many black Americans. Here's why I say this. And here's why I get to the point. I'm just leaving this up here for a moment so you can see it for yourself. They're saying that this is, this is according to Hitler and the Nazi propaganda. They're saying that the Jew is a byproduct of this guy like an Arab or something like that. Like an Arab Edomite or something. Orientalane, right? And then on one side, then he's also a byproduct of the Hamitain. And you can see this is almost like, a, like an Ethiopian, but you can tell it's a black man right here. Right? So they're saying that the Jew is part like Middle Easterner and he's part black. Mmm. Maybe this is why they, they acted that way with Whoopi. Right? But they were still keeping a card up their sleeve. You, you understand what I'm saying? They was keeping a card up their sleeve. But this is, a, this is one of the presentations right here, right, that Hitler was actually saying. So when we look at the anti-Semitism, because Semitic is defined as being Afro, <laughs> right? Or, or rather when we say Hebrew, Hebrew is considered to be Afro-Semitic, Afro, Afro that connects with Africa, as we say, that connects with Ham, Ham in the Bible. You see the Hamitain right there, the Ham, right? They're like the Hamite. And that is connected with... Uh, the 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 um uh what's the next one calm calm like kamo hamo kamo ham in the hebrew ham some can't do the ham right so in some of the dialects it's calm like in the hebrew we say ham for ham right in english it's ham in in um in uh what is it ethiopic and in the royal amharic another Amharic and Afro-Semitic language, we say Kam. So we also say Kemet, like Kem, Kemo-Semitic. That means that even the language Hebrew is at least part black. <laughs> but, but black, remember, the first word is qualifies the second. So it's Afro-Semitic. Now think about that. That wasn't lost on the so-called Nazis in their rhetoric, right? But this is what they are saying. And you see over here has nigger. You see nigger? And you see nigger right there? Or Niger? Niger and, and niggers in the Bible or Niger's in the Bible too. Niger, Nigeria. Right? So just want to show you this right here as to what we say 
about this right here just a couple of opening words on this we're going to follow hopefully up on this on more you know more and also go into some other ones but they always suppress this why don't they just say well you see the nazis were saying that the jew has some black blood the jew is something about black but they don't want to say that but this is what the nazis were saying and that's why when they say the nazis were anti-semitic and racist you see what i'm saying but then when we black people start to talk up, people tell us, shut up. Or they, they do like whoop, whoop, whoopee. What they do is whoop, 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 whoopee. They made her sit down for two weeks and then she came back all sort of apologetic. You know, because whoopee know how to play that game too, right? Sort of apologetic. But that was a wake-up call there. Are you woke? Are you woke yet? Okay, so let's go over here and we're going to sum this up and then follow up on this with another, right? With another vlog, another vid, maybe maybe hopefully we can just touch on this okay that's part of that that's there okay so many of the black people says so different types of black folks when i said different types of black folks some are for example we say african and jamaican well the jamaican thing we can kind of address a little better because jamaica you know it's identifying these black people they have a like citizenship right they're jamaica jamaican right and like when they say blacks, if it was black Americans, black Americans, right, would, to a degree, based on the laws as they've been practiced internationally, because like I said before, a black person in America, even though he has legal rights here and there, will experience more racism necessarily than he would experience as being a black American with American citizenship somewhere in some foreign country, some third world or some other country, you know, out there. You know, if he has a problem, he more or less would get similar treatment to what his white counterpart in a foreign country would get, you know, because it's a political thing. It's a political thing. So America will put on its best behavior on the world stage, you know, to protect its citizen so that other people, that's why so many people come into America for immigration, trying to get citizenship so they can get these protections too, this American protection. So when they say blacks, it's somewhat disingenuous how they speak. If they said, well, Africans and Jamaicans, Jamaicans and Africans, they're becoming clear of what they're talking about. It's talking about people from Jamaica, black, black people from Jamaica, and they're talking about many different African nationalities. But here's my question, right? Where is the home country of these black people? What is, are these black people Ukrainian citizens? Are they Ukrainian citizens? We have, we have to speak in those terms because we don't speak in those terms here, then we can't speak in those terms on the continent. Right? When white people just want to come in and do what they want to do, right? You just fly open the doors and accept them, and next thing they're taking it over, right? And they're setting your laws and everything in your country. Then you're complaining that, oh, African leaders, they don't, they don't look out for their people. That's what we should be talking about. It's these African leaders. Where, what has the O... No, we can't say OAU. They, they already destroyed that, right? What has the AU done recently? <laughs> Who's to blame? What has the AU done? That's why I made the, 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 the kind of contrast and example right there. Well, I'm making the contrast now, but example that even if it was a black American, right, in another country, and they had a problem in this country, say, say there's an invasion over there, what's the first thing we always hear? Oh, there's a war, something going on. The Americans are trying to get out the American citizen. The American will, will put forward some sort of like, you know, um, you know, like announcement, like like all American citizens evacuate. I remember it, it happened in a few um, past um, incidences when there was a war or something was stirring up in certain countries, and they was talking about how they were evacuating, right? America is evacuating its citizens. Why aren't these African nations? I can say why not Jamaica, but we know Jamaica doesn't really have the so-called resources. That's not an excuse, but you know. We're going to take Jamaica, the Jamaican thing, in a little different sense, you know. So first of all, we're going to exit out the black American part. Because if there, if there is any black Americans over there, go to the American embassy. Isn't there an American embassy in Ukraine? You should have been going to the American embassy if you're over there. 
but you never know. You might have some black Americans hanging out with some, you know, Africans, some stateless Africans. I say stateless because that's why they always say African. Notice they never, well, well actually one particular article said Nigerian. This say Nigerian, you know. Um, I wanted to go in that article and go in more details, but right here we wanted just to address the Ukraine, like a follow-up to other video. Ukraine, right? Ukraine, um, <laughs> this Ukraine situation, blacks, Africans, blacks, Jamaicans, and Africans. Well, no, since we're gonna put the Jamaicans, not last, but Jamaica is a little different a situation. Some other things I learned. I never knew so many Jamaicans were over there. But then Jamaicans can go to, according to how the international laws are, I don't know if you know, that Jamaicans can go to um, 86 different countries um, and like have their visas waived. I was like, wow, ain't that something? They can go to 86 different countries and don't have to go through the visa situation that many other you know, nationals of certain countries can, you know, have to go through. Now, remember, we're in this time that's called the times of the Gentiles. Gentiles, simply and accurately put, is nations. In the political terminologies, we're living in a time of nation states. Remember what they did with Africa, you know, the continent? First of all, they, they renamed it Africa, and then they divided it up with all these artificial countries, 54, 54 countries, 3,000 tribes, what was it, 200? Was it 200 languages? Because we did some research on that when people would be talking about, I'm African, we African. What, which African are we? There's 3,000 different tribes. There's 54 different countries. There's 200 different, I think 200, might be 2,000. I'll check that out. Might be wrong on the 200. But there's at least over, let's just say over 200 different languages. So which African are you? Black American, right? Black person from the Caribbean. Because us that talk that goofy stuff, we talk in this goofy way. We just we just support all of Africa. That's why we can't do no good for none of Africa. Cause we're not focused, right? We're not even focusing even in this Ukraine, this insane Ukraine. <laughs> this situation in Ukraine is insane. <laughs> it's really insane. First of all, it's become more insane because we didn't even know so many black people over there. We expected it to be African migrants. You know, getting on the boats and just going to people's countries and say, we do, we, 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 our country bad, we need job, food, and everything else. Now, stop for a moment. You can say, Europe did this to us, but you can't expect to play the guilt trip on people who have a historical, um, history, uh, historical history, have, have history, right? Have history of being. Racial, biased, wicked, murderous to their own people. I mean, people don't really know even the fullness of World War II or what happened. Once again, World at War series. If you're into it, check out the World at War series. It's at least, uh, what, 10, to 10, 20, 20 part, but it's very, very good. It is very, very good if you can if you can bear that sort of thing. Some people don't have the mind space. It's like a drive. It's like a computer. It's like a phone. They don't have enough space in their mind, their memory, you know, to really, you know, you know what I mean? The the RAM. They don't have RAM. <laughs> Can't run too many programs, too many windows open. Right? Too many windows open. Right? So this is the situation we see, right? And the African nations, right? The African many of the African nations have to be called out. Has to be called out, not looking out for their citizens. In fact, if they were looking out for their citizens, a little bit better. And this is this is when we have black people overtly like running their own countries. We black Americans, in that sense, we really don't run America, right? We we influence certain things in certain areas. We might have a little more influence than elsewhere, right? But everything that we got in America, we had to go out there and fight and had to risk life and limb and resource to get it. You see what I'm saying? Even to the point of, of revolutionary and still, and still the battle, the war is going on. You know what I mean? At the same time, we're like Germany in a sense, in one sense. People want to know, all these people listening, they wonder, what do I mean by you like Germany? We're like Germany. Why did Hitler and the Nazis lose? They were on too many fronts. And we as black people over here, we are fighting on too many fronts. Too many fronts. I'm talking about as black Americans. Let me be very clear. As black Americans, even as black Rastafari, we have to build up amongst I and I. 
so that we can even help our Rastafari brothers from different regions, even, even, even from the Caribbean. If we're not united up here in this North country as black American Rastafari, how can we help anybody else in any other place? See, our ancestors were able to because they showed and proved that unity. That's why people look back on the history. You see everybody always posting these old, you know, pics from, you know, the the the, the, 20, the, the 30s, or, uh, m m rather the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and 80s, and uh, well, it, it trails off as we get into the 80s because things started to retrograde. You know, when we started to, you know, get in the 80s and really by the time we got in the 90s, you know, we went from from um, black power to niggas with attitudes <laughs> for reasons. We, there, there, there's, there's some reasons that are mm, somewhat valid, you know what I mean? But that doesn't change the fact that, you know, we were losing, you, you know, we was losing on that front and we have lost on that front. Right. And now nearly what, 30 years later. We really are unable, you know, we're drained. Black Americans, we are drained in this black worldwide black power movement, right? Because others are always expecting us, right, to kind of like make a noise and get out on the front line for their issue. And they are not getting out doing for themselves. And we're not calling them to account. You know, we're like feeling sorry for Africa. Why are we feeling sorry for Africa? We should make Africa and Africans accountable. Right? Accountable. We should call them out. Right? Call them out. Right? These are human rights violations. Human rights violations are going on by African leaders in African countries. And we as black people, we just don't call say racism. Look, the white man's racist. He's right. What, naughty by nature? <laughs> He's racist. It seems, not all, not all, not all, not all, but on the level of um, nation states on the Goyim, the Gentile nation, the end of the times of the Gentiles, the end of the times of the nation state. It's ending, but it's ending very horribly. A lot of people, many more will suffer, many more will die. A lot of people are getting caught up, right? And on one level, for these regular people who are just trying to, you know, you know, you know, go to school, get an education, because they could get an education in their own country, they probably wouldn't go over here, right? I mean, can you imagine? All through Africa, east, west, north, south. Most of these Africans that, that become migrants jump in the boat. We just heard just recently there was some of them from East Africa, right, that was trying to go to Yemen or to Saudi Arabia. Their boat capsized. I don't know, like 30, 40, 50 people were dead. You know, this is a reach. I had to go look over the, the story, the article, and say, this must have been in the past. I heard about this happening before, but I looked at it and it was recent. I think it was like this year, this year, last year, you know, but it was within the last year's time. I said, Chan, this is still going on. And partly the people in those countries that try to flee and migrate to other countries, usually, usually European countries, right, that migrate to European countries, you know, are only doing so, right, because ones like us are not calling out the African, the Africans on the continent, especially those who are in the position Right, whether they voted, whether they have been, you know, voted in, or whether they they are the ruling people, they are the the people who are running the Africans who are running Africa. Remind me of what Pharaoh say that he said they're very self selfish. They don't care about their people, right? They really don't. You know, I've, I've had Africans told me that. You know, different ones told me that because I'm thinking like, wait, you're asking me for help. You're asking us for help over here because we in America. And then there's some Africans. Right? who think like we owe them. We're going to have to address that. Do we owe Africa? Do we, right, the descendants right, of those who were not protected, probably sold by other black folks, Africans, you know, definitely not protected, you know, do we owe them? What do you think? We owe Africans? Now, see, most people are going to respond to this from an emotional, psychological, you know, a psychological or emotional, the emotional mind. Because here we're dealing with, a, you know, a whole group of people with an emotional mind, right? This is why we're going through this complaint thing. Racism, look, they're being racist. We're being turned away at the border, right? And then I'm finding out that it's not just no blacks, but it's saying like no English, no, no this, no that. There's a couple of other peoples, you know, because they've already discriminated 
some of these Eastern European people historically have discriminated against other people. Do you know anything about history? You know how they treated the Poles, Polish people? You know how they treated the Slavs, the Slavic people? Right? And we're not here defending them, but we're saying, do you know how they have treated their own European people? So it's almost like people are going into an area totally unprepared. Right? During the good times, it was all right. We didn't even know there were so many black folks, you know, Africans, Jamaicans over there. But now we get to know, you know, we've seen this video and, and, and the numbers of people, like, wow. Even some of the countries like Jamaica and some of the African nations that perhaps seek to help, they don't even know that the people, some of the people are not over there undocumented. They got over there for who brought them over there. They went over there. Now, this racist. Did you see any racism beforehand? <laughs> Is this the first time you, you, you're witnessing racism? in the ukraine to all those ones who are complaining in the ukraine but the one who is responsible for it right partly are the individuals themselves i know this is going to be hard for ones one's going to say how could you say that it's not like this is happening right in jamaica right it's not like this is happening in one of those african nations right and then you want to tell me that these people are racist <laughs> now as though they wasn't racist, almost like they're two-faced now, right? They had one face. They're trying to save themselves. You have to understand that many of these countries like Ukraine have agreements with other countries. They have agreement with other countries because this is those countries, right? Let's show this right here. Let's show this right here. Over here. Okay, this is about an explosion report in Ukraine, right? Now, you see all these different, these different areas. Where's Ukraine? This is Ukraine right here. So some are trying to get into Poland. They're trying to go west. They're trying to get into Poland. Now you see Poland over there and not letting them in, into Poland, right? But you have to imagine that, wait, some of these people might have entered into Ukraine undocumented, right? I'm saying that the, because, how can I say, a shortcut makes deep scars. You ever heard that before? A shortcut, shortcuts can make deep scars. For example, if I stab somebody, right, I may cut through arteries, you know, like stabbing somebody like in, you know, in the bowling, the, the, the bowling pin area, especially the lower part of the bowling pin, you know, like in the gut area. You might go through various different, you know, arteries, and I mean, like organs, you mess some organ. But now if I just slash you, a slash is a long cut. A slash may be bad visually, some might have a long scar or whatever like that, but it's not going very deep. So it's a long, that's, that's the, as you call it, the long cut. Shortcuts make deep scars because you're going to cut through many different organs, vital organs. Like, 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 you, like you stab somebody, you have a, a long blade and you stab somebody. You know, you can damage them very badly, more bad than if you slash them. A slash, generally speaking, is not as dangerous as a stab. I say that to say many have taken certain shortcuts. Now, there are some who have gone about it the right way, but their countries right, don't do, say, what America does to protect its citizens. So this consciousness right, that African nations and African you know, um, governments must protect their citizens and especially their citizens at home and abroad. Right. You know, there's no play play thing. This, this is the reality of doing those things. Some people, you know, maybe they thought those things wasn't necessary. But now look at the situation that, you know, that's being experienced. Anyway, brothers and sisters, you don't want to be long at this one right here. But um, that's our basic point right there is that these African nations, Jamaica seems to be talking some things. You know, we heard um, who's this guy right here. You know, this guy. Right? I don't know. I don't even know his name. <laughs> you know, but the Jamaican pr Prime Minister. And people say, oh, you don't even know the name of the Jamaican Prime No. Do you know the name of the Jamaican Prime Minister? Are you Jamaican? Well, then if you're Jamaican, then you should know the name of your Prime Minister because you, you get in touch with your Prime Minister and ask your Jamaican Prime Minister, what is he doing about those Jamaican students and Jamaicans over there who are stuck in the Ukraine? I, I heard here he was, he was, he was, he was saying, um, this, this clip goes of an article where he was um, um, like condemning Russia or something like that. He was like speaking to Russia. 
instead of condemning Russia, maybe some diplomacy to say, hey, listen, um, I got my people over there. You know what I mean? So sometimes people do these kind of things. These leaders do this goofy stuff. He's going to get out there and he's now going to condemn Russia for the Russian invasion, say Russia is bad and all of this. And now he got his citizens over there. Don't you think that makes it worse for his citizen? Shouldn't, shouldn't the first line, the first approach be, we got our people over here. Russia has just invaded the Ukraine. Therefore, we, we, sh we would like to condemn him publicly, but let's first behind the scenes might you know do some like p2p negotiation peer-to-peer -peer negotiations right on behalf of our citizens you know what i mean well how would they know the jamaicans from everybody else now if you say well if they're going to help out the jamaicans they should help out the other african no everyone should help out their own like one hand washes the other and both hands wash the face you know this is how the other nations do it you know but let's 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 admit it right black people haven't really been most black peoples around the world haven't been really ruling themselves very long right and and really haven't really been ruling themselves right it's, it's like we've been co-ruling ourselves right kind of playing at rulership but when things get difficult right we turn around to the same white man that we've been you know trying to guilt we're trying to guilt the white man we can build up ourselves right and strengthen ourselves and and be able to do for ourselves and we're worrying about guilting somebody else for something that happened hundreds of years ago but not paying attention to the things that are happening you know right now i mean the real thing the full like the 360 of what a government is supposed to do you know in other words these other nations jamaica the african nations they don't have 360 deals for their citizens all right. Yes, America has that. Doesn't make America the best place or, you know, or so much a better place. We're just saying notice the differences. We're taking the example of the Americans. Whenever something happens in another country, you know, they always you hear them talk about evacuating. People even come to the government or they they ask their government representative, what we're going to do about we have people over there. What we're going to do about that, getting the people out and they'll tell you that, oh, we're going to evacuate them. And the government is, is sending the military or sending this or doing that or speaking to the other people and working out a way to get their citizens out of harm's way. They all the other countries generally speaking and part of what people are looking at to be so-called racism directed against black people is not quite what it's being made out to be i mean i'm seeing some crazy memes out there and some crazy kind of videos and saying the european is racist the white man shows his racist colors again <laughs> and then you go right into his living room you go into his Liberam, Liebensraum, right? That, that German word, Liebensraum. You go right into their living room, <laughs> sit down on the couch, put your foot up, right? Eat popcorn, watch TV and everything else like that. And then when he says, um, either get out, you say, oh, I have a right to be here. I'm a human being. You, you, but you still are in his house. You still are in his house, right? The problem here is that most other nations don't really do for their citizens much. But black African nations tend to do for their citizens at home less and to their citizens abroad even less. So this should really be about my right, complaining about African leaders. The complaint is misdirected. The complaint, you know, it should be about so-called African, you know, African leaders, right? And the lack of proper, not just leadership, but proper securing of its citizens at home and abroad. Here, Jamaica, 828 a month versus Ukraine, 541 a month. I had to do some research and say, why all these Jamaicans are over there? I didn't know that many Jamaicans are over there. Mm-hmm. And somebody told me that Jamaicans were over in Ukraine. I'm thinking like, oh, what, like a musical band or something? Maybe that's my ignorance. I'm ignorant, right? But then again, 
it seems like Jamaicans, if you knew about this, you're always keeping a secret. I didn't know so many Jamaicans out there, but there is somebody who has something on the YouTube about Jamaica and all these different Jamaicans in all these different countries. I'm definitely going to follow up and get a little more informed. They're saying that they're allowing these white people to cross the border, so forth and so on. Well, these white people, most of the white people live there. Most of the white people, you're talking about Ukrainian people and people who probably live, like maybe there's a Polish person in Ukraine and they want to get back to Poland, they're a Polish citizen. And you're saying that they are racist because they are dealing with their own citizens first and foremost? Okay, maybe that's so. Maybe they are racist because they're dealing with their own citizens first and foremost. But doesn't it sound strange that they're dealing with their own citizens and yet you are a citizen but not of Ukraine and your own country. What is your own country doing? What is your own country having in place? Some of these African nations are out there talking about, oh, bad Russia, 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 this, instead of firstly trying to communicate to the Russians, saying, listen, right, this, this war has nothing to do with us or our citizens, but our citizens are being adversely affected. They should be behind the scenes trying to work out things for their citizen instead of talking a lot of stupid stuff in the public trying to like i don't know they're trying to get america to look favorably or england i don't know what they're trying to do but they obviously are not doing their politics right so if the other countries care more about their citizens can we say that black african jamaica cares less about its own but i'm gonna zoom in more on the african nations right because we know that jamaica Jamaica, I can't say, Jamaica is, is, is our brother. <laughs> Jamaica is more of our brother than the majority of these other African nations. Why? Because Jamaica and Jamaicans share this 400-year experience, right? which has caused us to be in a situation that we are not as able to do for ourselves as we expect African what we expect of African nations. African nations are no longer under colonialism. Right? All that work of His Majesty and the other righteous, patriotic, um, you could say pro-black, pro-Africa leaders right, has just fallen on his face terribly. And what is the AU saying? No, no, no. What is the AU doing? Remember, the AU has agreements with other nations and with other international bodies, like the NATO. NATO, North American Treaty Organization, right? They have agreements, right, with other bodies like the EU, right? The EU communicates. That's why the AU, the OAU was changed to the A AU to be like the EU, right? Even though the EU started around the same time as the OAU, but they messed that work up because they went against the elder of elders, right? The king of kings, Haile Selassie, who was one of the leading lights and spearheads that helped Africa get through the first phase of liberation. That was phase one. Now we are really around phase three, if three to four. Phase two totally failed, right, and set us back almost to, to, to zero, to negative one, right? So now we're at this particular point. So where's the AU communicating? Because the AU is an international kind of... Um, organization that communicates on the level to other you know collective organizations like the European Union communicating to the Europe or communicating directly to Russia right because many of the African nations also you know do some business with Russia they do business right so why don't they do business do some business to get its citizens out there instead of speaking out in the media about the so-called Ukraine crisis and how bad the Russians are and you know because regular folks maybe we can say that maybe right but even then we have to recognize we might have people over there you know what I mean like if I got somebody in your house and they went in your house under good times but now there's a family squabble a family dispute that's going on in your house I shouldn't be out there talking about, like talking bad about you in public and I got people in your house. I should say, listen, my people in your house don't have anything to do with all this stuff that you're going through. I mean, I'd like to help you out. I hope, you know, you can work this out. But can I just get my people out your house? You know what I mean? Let my people come out your house. You know, instead of being outside your house and ridiculing you and then my people in your house 
and I'm not even focusing on them, right? So anyway, anyway, the Cossacks. I thought this was interesting here. I don't know what this is about. Cossacks in Jamaica, Ukraine at the Antipodes, right? I'm not too sure, but I saw Jamaica there. Cossacks in Jamaica, Ukraine at the Antipodes, right? Brings a whole new meaning to black Russian. So when black people see all these white people sliding and going through the border, they're like, what about me? Oh, these people must be racist. Well, what about your governments? Are your governments racist? Maybe your governments, if these other people, are, they're racist, maybe we need to be a little more racist in the sense of about our race first, right? At least the African nation should be about their citizens first. Just like we black Americans often, so often have been about blacks first. So if it's a black African, whatever, 54 country, that black African thing is going on, we are about it. We are aware. We are, you know, speaking out and seeing what can be done. And even, you know, getting, you know, to our American people over here, mean like the government, you know, trying to push the government to do something for one's way over there in the other part of the world or even in the Caribbean. We are standing up like that. Right. And all we're saying to the African, you know, leaders, right, including those in the Caribbean, too, is that y'all got to do more for your own as well. And we support you in doing that. But we can't just be watching this stuff go on. Right. And hear all this racist like this, this, this kind of racist talk and saying, wait people right at the heart of, of, of the worst atrocities in the 20th century, you know, in that region, right? You know what I mean? You have to expect this is in their nature and before they did it to white people. You see, what was going on in Europe, right, from World War II time was white on white. Most of us don't even, you know, we, we, we shrug our shoulder, right? We shrug our shoulder, it doesn't really matter to us. Right. But then you're going to go over there because you figure I could get some benefits for myself and, you know, I'll be unique. I'll be like the, you know, the chocolate, you know, the chocolate in the in a box of um, vanilla. <laughs> I'll be special. And then don't expect that these same people who have shown in humanity. I'm not saying all the people, white people have done this. But what I'm trying to say is that this has happened where they have done it to themselves. So when they did it to themselves, when white on white violence happened, and a lot of the white on white violence, some of it was anti-Semitic. You know what I'm saying? Some of it had a lot to do with, quote, race, at least in the sense that some white people don't look at other white people to be on the same level of the white race. Some of them looked at the other white people to be a little less, like Uda mentioned. They're not Uber mentioned. The Nazi looked at themselves to be Uber mentioned. And he looked at German citizens who happened to be Jews as Uta mentioned as to be of a, of a, like a subhuman, right? Basically they'd say subhuman or of a lesser race. And then we see and know what they historically did to themselves. All the people they killed over what? You know, war. Now war is rising up again, right? In this particular region. And so all we're saying is dear black people, right? They say, I love us for real. Well, if we love ourselves for real, open rebuke, Right? Open rebuke is better than secret love. Right? Open correction is better than secret. We, we, we're going to do something on, on um, Snoop. Snoop Lion or Snoop Dogg has um, become the owner of um, the brand owner of uh, Death Row Music. That was something else we wanted to touch on. This was the article right here, just to show it at the outro right here, where you see blacks complain of racism. Uh, open parentheses, we should put again. Close for instance, as they are turned away at the Ukraine border. All right, this is this article here. We'd like to go through this article as a research here, see what we can get from this article. It's on Gulf today. Check out the article if we can. Um, we'll put it, excuse me, in the you know, in the description. Right, we'll put it in the description. Right, um, yeah, but it's not just happening to black people as it says this isn't just happening to black people you see this line right there even indians arabs and syrians so we can extend this what is india is india is india looking out for its citizens 
Uh, how about the Arab countries? Are they looking out for the? How about the Syrians? He added, and that shouldn't be the case. But notice something. May this be the lesson learned. You see how these same white people who are getting through, they're getting through because somebody on the other side of that border is advocating for them, right? Is advocating for them. Hopefully we can say about this sort of a situation never again. Right? I hope that we're able to say never again. This last part here, he has been waiting to receive Winston, a Nigerian national in Poland, but has not been able to contact him with a phone. He fears that his battery has died or worse. Quote, no English, no Polish, no blacks. Look how they put the B in blacks in lowercase. That's racist there too. They say, well, blacks is not a nationality. Well, blacks is not a lowercase either. But that, it just goes to show you. We acting like lowercase, and therefore they're treating us like lowercase, right? Other people's cases on higher up, right, to be dealt with. Ours is lower down. This is what he told his friend, right? This is about racism, right? As I talk to you, I haven't slept for the past two days. I'm worried about hearing that my friend, my brother, is no more, that my fellow Africans have died. Equal rights is something that everyone should have. Yes. Well, in the political sense, yes, but you got to fight. We got to fight for everything, right? We got to fight for everything that we need to fight for. Africans don't have equal rights, even as much as we Africans will fight if necessary, as we are confident in the victory of good over evil. Africans don't have equal rights with white Ukrainians. You know, I, I, I don't want to even go further on this right here. Because something's wrong with that whole statement right there. See, that statement, a lot of you all get it, right? Because you get it, you, you got an emotional mind, not a real rational mind. Africans don't have equal rights. Like, somebody who is not part of my family don't have equal rights in my house. But there are some rights, human rights, they should have. Once they put white Ukrainians right there, white Ukrainians. Now, are you saying black Africans who are Ukrainian citizens don't have equal rights, that will be interesting. Then we really have an issue, right? But if these are migrants that might have come in illegally, because this, this is going to tell you, this article is going to tell you that some are afraid to do anything because some of their paperwork is not right. Some of their documentation is not right. Now, we know one thing in America, right? If I want to go somewhere or travel somewhere, I got to get my paperwork together. Right? I can't just, just, I mean, I could try to sneak out and find a way out, yeah. But if I sneak out, it's going to be harder for me to come back. Right now, if I leave America, right, and then not the so-called, through the legal process, the government process, I, I, learned, I, I go down to Mexico, I, I go reverse, I reverse, um, do what the Mexicans, I do a reverse Mexican, right? I go through the border the opposite way, and I travel, and I go all over the world, such and such, and I decide, you know, man, I'm over in this country. I'm stuck. I want to get back. It probably is going to be bad. It's going to be real difficult. It's going to be, it's going to be a shite, right? It says we should not discriminate. We're all human. This is war. I think in a sense we do need discernment. I'm not going to use the word discrimination because there's, there's the terminology gets confused now. We need better discernment, right? Footage has gone viral of people being blocked from boarding trains and another of a Chinese man in the country apparently ranting about African refugees taking away opportunities and referring to them as darkish people. <laughs> yeah, all right, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we, 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 we could go on that right there, you know, because many of these African leaders have allowed, you know, China or Chinese and other Asians, you know, as they are called today to come into their countries and do business, so forth and so on, sometimes giving other nationalities in Africa more opportunities than they give their own citizens. And you say that we should not hold African heads of state, not just the heads, but the whole government, everybody who is in authority. We should hold everybody in Africa who is in authority, right, responsible, right, responsible. And it says some of the locals are prior to prioritizing right ukrainians and black people are struggling to get onto buses facing hostility or being denied at the border she told the independent now 
I know I went through more of this even right now than I really even intended to, right, right here. But it's a part where one said that they, you know, are afraid because they don't have all of their paperwork. And I'm saying, well, think about that right there. These people, they're prioritizing, right? Remember, they are Ukrainian and they're in Ukraine. I just want you to understand what I'm saying. They're Ukrainian and they are in Ukraine. Yes, they happen to be white because Ukraine presently is a white Eastern European country, right? A white country in Europe, Eastern European technically, right? They're a white Eastern European country, right? Anyway, we had to start pushing Africans on the bus. About 4,000 Nigerians are currently studying in Ukraine and comprise the second biggest group of, of foreign students in the country behind Moroccans, which account for 8,000 students. That, that, that brings an interesting question to mind. Have the Moroccans been able to get out? Maybe the African leaders or those in authority should find out, well, what did the Moroccans do? You see what I'm saying? And then this complaint of racism need to also come from the top but it seems as though many of the african um authorities like the african leaders their country those in authority in their countries are not properly doing their job and we already know they're not properly doing their job because that's why you have a lot of their their people you know fleeing their country and going to europe because they're not properly doing their job things must change you know what i mean things must change things must change this is a very good article um, I'll try to put it in the, um, there we go, the last part right there. Some people have not left because they are scared of what they will meet on the other side. Somebody might say that didn't stop some of the ones who, you know, went there to begin with. But anyway, another issue is some people here don't have all their documents. So they are scared of what will happen if they attempt to leave. But it is of the utmost importance that all foreigners leave as soon as possible. That's agreed. It's a life or death situation. I definitely agree that, you know, you don't want to get caught up when, when like, like in a white on white conflict. Because it is a white on white conflict, right? These are two European nations. And here we see groups of non-European, mainly black peoples, we say black peoples, right? You know, Africans, Jamaicans, and they even mentioned some other groups, Indians and, and others, not necessarily black people, but you know, we'll let the Indians call it. Are you all black or you're not black? Anyway, but you have other people who are not white Europeans and they're not either Ukrainian or Russian, you know, who really do need to be brought out of this situation. You know what I mean? A number of Nigerian students and their family have taken to social media to share their concerns about alleged racial discrimination from guards at borders and safety points. And what they said was a lack of support. And what they said was, a, oh, boom, there we go. You see, they buried the lead. Here we go, brothers and sisters. They buried the lead. I can't I can highlight this. I'm trying to highlight this right here. There we go. They buried the lead. Right? They bury the lead. This is the lead right here. And what they said was a lack of support. Let me copy that. A lack of support from their government. So let's call out, let that be the next series of videos, right? By ones and ones who do a lot of videos on social media. Let's call out for the Nigerians who are stuck over there. Let's call out the Nigerian government. Let's find out about the other blacks and Africans, you know, even Jamaica. Let's call out Jamaica because if Jamaica can't do it, right, Jamaica should be able to turn to, you know, the mother country, Britain, right, the British, you know, you know, let's, let's call them out, right, let's call out the African so-called heads of state. Anyway, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, let's seal this up right here. Give thanks. This, this 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 what a ting what a ting what a ting what a ting right yeah jamaican living in ukraine right jamaica in ukraine versus in jamaica <laughs> ukraine explosion free visa zones for jamaicans i wonder why were so many jamaicans over there this is the reason why 86 visa free countries you see that means they can go in these countries without any visa 
See, getting in is not the problem, brothers and sisters. Obviously, right? It's getting out that has turned into a great problem, right? Getting in was easy. Getting out, get out, right? Get out. Lekalekah.